Hey there, welcome to episode 119 of Mike's Collection. I'm Mike, and the part of my collection that I'm going to be talking about today is some G.I. Joes from the early 2000s. Now that's a very specific era of G.I. Joe, and it doesn't really have a defined name. Um, we usually, like me and other collectors, refer to it as the new sculpt era, but that doesn't really work, especially as there have been much newer sculpts that came later. It's kind of like with comic books, you know, you've got a very clearly defined, there's like the golden age, the silver age, the bronze age, and then the modern age. But you can't really have the modern age go forever. And it's kind of weird to have a new age after the modern age. It just, it doesn't really make sense. It's a little clumsy. When people first named it the golden, silver, bronze age, I guess they didn't really think that far ahead or didn't worry about it. It's kind of the same way with G.I. Joe. Um, when G.I. Joe first came out in 1982, and right up till the line ended in 1994, like that line was called G.I. Joe, a real American hero. And so people refer to that either as the vintage line, which holds up. It's the first line of three and three quarter inch G.I. Joe figures. Um, some people refer to it as the real American hero line, which holds up, or R.A.H., you know, as an abbreviation. That usually works. Um, the original Joe line, you know, all that stuff kind of works. Um, but then G.I. Joe went away for like 10 years and then it came back in the early 2000s and they reused some classic sculpts, but they also kind of created new sculpts for the first time in a long time because there had been some G.I. Joe figures released in the years between like though that 10 year gap, there were Joes released in like the late 90s but they were just repaints of molds of figures that we'd gotten in like the 80s and stuff. So Joe collectors were kind of expecting that's going to be what we're going to get for the foreseeable future. Hasbro will throw us a bone every once in a while, repainting some old figure I already have. So it was a big deal in 2002 when Hasbro launched a new line of G.I. Joes with new sculpts. So it started in 2002 with a line called G.I. Joe vs. Cobra. And the figures were released in two packs. And then that eventually led into 2003, which was the Spy Troops. And the gimmick there was that some of the figures came with uh, gear to kind of disguise himself as somebody from the other side. So, like, for example, you got a shipwreck figure that came with a Cobra Commander helmet and a Cobra Commander cape. They weren't very convincing costumes, but uh, that was the premise, anyway, behind Spy Troops. And then into 2004 and 2005... We had a line called Valor vs. Venom, which the premise behind that was Cobra Commander was using like some venomized mutation serum to kind of mutate his soldiers to enhance their abilities with those of animals. So we got a bunch of new Cobra Troopers. And then that line kind of fizzled out. Um, it became, for a short while, what was known as the Direct-to-Consumer line, or DTC. Um, and that's because Hasbro, I don't know if the sales weren't there or whatever, but they stopped selling them to department stores, but they started selling them direct to the customer. So they would say, these are the new figures we're going to have on our website, and you would buy them directly from Hasbro. So those were kind of the four eras of the new sculpt era. So Joe versus Cobra, Spy Troops, Valor versus Venom, DTC. And then G.I. Joe went away again for just a little while, and then it relaunched again with what is known as the modern era of G.I. Joe. And those figures are the like four inch figures with more detail, more accessories, you know, better articulation. So the modern line has gone right up until about 2019 and then that stopped. And now currently we have the six inch line of G.I. Joe classified figures. So for one, the, the name New Sculpt doesn't really work and the name Modern doesn't really work. So someday, somebody's going to have to come up with some definitive names for these eras. Anyway, I think most Joe fans my age, like in their, from anywhere from their late 30s to late 40s, you know, because I was like four or five when I started collecting G.I. Joe. So, uh, you know, I loved that early era of Real American Hero. That's what I grew up on. That's when the cartoon was going. That's when the comic book was going. That was really the peak of G.I. Joe. So everybody loves that stuff. Some people love maybe, you know, small smaller windows of that era. 
like for me for example I started right at the beginning in 1982 but the last year that I bought any figures was 1990 and the line did carry on for four more years until 94 but I didn't really get any of those figures and I didn't really have any more attachment to the brand I found the colors were getting too bright the you know they were redoing a lot of characters over and over again the weapons were all like pink and green and stuff it was just it was getting a little sillier they were trying to compete with Ninja Turtles and what have you so yeah I don't really have any attachment to those last couple years but like a buddy of mine he only collects G.I. Joe from like 82 to 85 I think that's his focus um, and then he probably grew out of it as a kid so he doesn't have the attachment to what came afterwards so people have different preferences within these eras but anybody that's a G.I. Joe fan now unless they're a brand new fan a young kid who got into it but anybody my age I don't think anybody's starting to get into G.I. Joe for the first time when they're 40 they all loved Real American Hero so everybody agrees Real American Hero was great at least at some point in time and then the modern era that started in 2007 that brought a lot of collectors back everybody really liked those figures that's when the uh, collectors club was happening that's when the live action movies came out that drove a lot of attention to the brand and uh, yeah the uh, modern era of figures ended up producing more figures than the classic line the real American hero line ever had it was really expansive it had vehicles it had play sets it was huge um, for you know I think mostly for adult collectors I don't know if it was huge with kids which is probably why it eventually fizzled away but um, you know it lasted a long time it lasted about as long as the vintage line did and uh, yeah so that had a lot of fans and to this day a lot of people still wish that line was still going even Hasbro is trying to keep it going a little bit by releasing what they're calling retro GI Joe's but it's actually figures from the modern line just repackaged but they're only kind of trickling those out little by little anyway so both those eras are pretty highly regarded but then you got that middle chunk the 2002 to 2005 um, and most people have kind of just disregarded that you don't see those figures selling very much on eBay you don't see many people talking about them online a lot of those new characters that were introduced in the early 2000s did not get updated in the modern era line the modern line focused on doing characters from the classic line so yeah the modern era is largely forgotten and there's a reason for that a lot of those new sculpts didn't work they were awkward and clunky some of the new designs were weird um, so yeah I can understand why some fans kind of shy away from that era but uh, I I loved that era to be honest with you like I would gotten out of G.I. Joe in 1990 and then in 2002 by that point I was you know I was a young adult I was moved out of the house I had some disposable income and G.I. Joe had come back and I was just so excited to see G.I. Joe back and Hasbro put a major push on it like it was for sale and retail they were trying to get kids eyes on this product they made a bunch of direct-to-video like CG animated movies they had trading card games they had a ton of vehicles and like other little side things like birthday hats and tablecloths and like there was a huge push on G.I. Joe then and even though the figures were weren't always the best you could tell that they were kind of geared for kids they were they were durable they were fun they were bright um, I really liked a lot of figures there and I bought a ton of them this was the only era this is really the only toy line I've ever done this with but I would army build the figures because they were pretty affordable and I would go on eBay and I would buy lots of just the same figure which is something I could never afford to do now because figures are so friggin expensive but I had a three folding card table set up in my apartment at one point and I had this huge diorama with the the uh, what is it the air sea base and all these other vehicles all surrounded and I had all these guys set up in poses and guys that were like dead from explosions and all this stuff like nowadays I don't have room to do that either everything's just like lined up very straight on bookshelves I don't have room to get elaborate but in 2002 it was very early into my adult toy collecting phase so uh, yeah I had room to do that and it was a lot of fun I have a lot of nostalgic ties to that early uh, the new sculpt era of G.I. Joe's so why am I talking about this now well in my last video I was reviewing some G.I. Joe classified figures some of the new six inch figures and so when I was bringing out those new versions of the figures like Zartan and the Cobra Trooper I was doing comparisons with the vintage figure and other versions of those characters that have come out since so with Zartan and the Trooper for example I would bring out the vintage figure from the 80s the uh, modern figure from you know from 2007 to 2019 
And then I would also bring out a figure from the New Sculpt era. And so by bringing out that bucket of New Sculpt era figures, they're all in storage right now, and rooting through it, it really made me kind of revisit those figures and think, there's some really cool stuff here, and I kind of feel like talking about them. So I know this probably isn't, for most of you, your favorite era of G.I. Joe. Some of you might not even really be aware of it. But I hope you check out this video and stick with me. The intent of this video is I have too many figures from that era to uh, to go over all of them. So the intent of this video is to do my top 20 Cobra Troopers. So this excludes any unique Cobra characters because there was some new um, like people added to Cobra's upper echelon like Venomous Maximus and stuff. I'm not going to go into any of those characters. I'm not going to go into any G.I. Joes. This is just the top 20 troop builders and another rule i've kind of given myself for this list is again because there's so many figures to choose from is the the new sculpt era was kind of a weird combination the first year it was or maybe not even the first year the first wave was all brand new sculpts these were toys that didn't exist in any form before but even by the second or third wave of figures they started peppering in uh just repaints of old vintage figures along with the new sculpts and some of those repaints were really cool. Um, for example, in the vintage toy line, my favorite two Cobra Troopers were the Ice Viper and the Heat Viper. I absolutely love those figures. And in the New Sculpt era, so that year from 2002 to 2006, we got repaints. So here's like a repaint of the Ice Viper. I don't know if you can see him all that well. He's a little dark here. But the original one had kind of a red ski mask and he didn't have any camo on him here. So that this one here, now he's got a blue ski mask and his helmet uh, pops off there. Anyway, I love this figure because it was it's a repaint of basically one of my favorite figures from the vintage line. So really cool. But there's nothing new as far as the sculpt goes. This is just a, a straight repaint of that vintage figure. Same as the Heat Viper who was a bright yellow, kind of orange in the vintage line. They repaint, repainted him here in Python Patrol colors. So he's black and gold and silver with that kind of cross hatching on his uh, sleeves and pant legs and stuff. I think this is a really cool looking repaint. Awesome figure. If I could have army built this guy and had a whole bunch of them, I would have. But unfortunately, he came in like a six pack of troopers. So that was a little expensive to army build. But yeah, really cool. So these guys are from that era. But because they are not new sculpts, they're just repaints of vintage figures. I didn't include any figures like that on this list. So this is all Cobra Troopers. From those years that were brand new sculpted and uh, yeah there's some really cool stuff and I hope that maybe I'm introducing you to some figures that you weren't aware of and uh, I'm not sure how much these things go for now maybe there's a bit more demand than there was but at the time when these things first came out and for several years afterwards they were quite uh, affordable which is why I was able to army build so much um, which you'll see here in a little bit anyway so let's uh, let's dive right into it with uh, number 20 on my list so at number 20, I've selected the Swamp Rat. So the first Swamp Rat was released in 2004. And then there was three variations in total. So there was the original and then two repaints that came later um, over the course of the two years of 2004 to 2005. So this is a new sculpt figure in that it's all new parts. And it's also a new character in that there was no version of the Swamp Rat in the vintage line. So this is a brand new character brand new trooper type. So let's take a look at it. Now, I actually think design-wise, the Swamp Rat is really cool. Whoops. But uh, the reason he ranks so low on my list is because I don't think the figure was executed very well. Like, I think he looks kind of goofy. But if you look at some of the artwork um, pertaining to the Swamp Rat, like the artwork on the packaging or the artwork that came on the trading card, he actually looks pretty cool and pretty menacing but the figure doesn't really convey that. So you can see here where I say new sculpt, like he works like a vintage GI Joe, like he's got all the same movement, um, but it's a softer plastic for one thing. So that feels a little different, which I actually appreciate right now, because if you watched my last video on the GI Joe classified figures, I had brought out some of my vintage figures for comparison. And when I tried to put them on display stands, I snapped two of their heels off in the matter of like five minutes, I broke two of my vintage G.I. Joes, which sucked. But these guys here, is, I'm, I'm not so worried about that because they're made of kind of a gummier rubber. It's a little softer. Um, so yeah, I don't know how that will hold up over time, but considering these figures are now 20 years old, um, it still looks pretty good. So this guy's got um, two knives 
that sheath on his legs there. Not very well. Doesn't go down all the way, but still it's kind of cool. So you can give him two knives. Uh, he's got this big machine gun. Um, now you notice he's got a tail. Now the tail, it doesn't actually plug in anywhere to the figure. He's got no tail hole. It just plugs into this hole on his cape. So that's that's kind of weird. I think that was a design choice. I don't think that's how the character was actually supposed to work. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense that you have a tail growing out of just this loose fitting like shawl that he's wearing. So I assume that's supposed to be attached to his butt. I don't know why it isn't. Um, but yeah, so there's that. Then he's got that kind of tattered cape with the Cobra logo over there. And then his helmet is removable. So you can pop this off. And then you can see he's kind of bald, creepy head underneath there with that other weird little mask. I don't know if that's to help him breathe or whatever, but that's affixed to his face. But it is kind of cool. Whenever they give you a removable helmet, it's appreciated, especially when it fits on nice and snug. Sometimes removable helmets can come across like really big and bulky, but I think it really works for this guy. So yeah, this is the original Swamp Rat in these kind of tan and brown colors. And I think maybe in retrospect, you could have called this a desert swamp rat. Uh, and then there's this version. I think this was the second one released. Exact same figure, same accessories. Still got the tail. Um, removable helmet. Um, but this one, you can see he's obviously different colors. And I'm not sure which one I like better. I think they're both decent. Um, and then there was a third one that I don't have. So yeah, there you go, that's the Swamp Rat. This is one of Cobra Commander's uh, Venomized Trooper. So since he came out during uh, 2004, that was when it was Valor versus Venom. And so these guys would have been Cobra Troopers that were chosen to be, I think, I'm guessing it would have been with rat DNA that probably allowed them to, I don't know, tunnel through the sewers or something. But uh, there you go, that's where you get the Swamp Rat. And so he's my number 20 pick. Now at number 19, I've got the Sand Scorpion. So this guy was released in 2004. Um, there are two variations, and you're looking at them both, and they were both released in 2004. Now, uh, I believe this figure was actually released in a different paint scheme, but with a different name. He was called Neurotoxin then, and he was an individual character. Um, I'm pretty sure that was the case. I think it was the same sculpt. Don't quote me on that. I'm not exactly doing any uh, background research. I'm kind of talking from memory here. But uh, yeah, so these were the two versions of Sand Scorpion. Now, like the Swamp Rat, this uh, came out during the Valor versus Venom. So this was a Venomized new trooper. There was no version of the Sand Scorpion in the vintage line. And uh, so yeah, let's take a look at him. Now, I believe this was the first one released. Now, kind of like the Swamp Rat, he's in kind of similar colors. He's you could almost call this like a desert sand scorpion and then, I don't know, night sand scorpion maybe for the other one. But so he's got kind of a unique design. He's got that visor over his face with the Cobra logo uh, on his forehead there. Cobra logo on his chest. And this cool kind of armor design down his legs. Now uh, he does come with a, you see a big like rifle here. Um, now he can hold it, but he can't hold it when he's got his claws on. You see he's got these uh, claw attachments and they are removable. They just kind of slide on like gloves and then he's got regular hands underneath. But uh, the claws, that's a pretty cool little weapon. And then you also notice his backpack, which just fell off. But uh, it is pretty neat too in that it's a mechanical scorpion and it's articulated all of its legs. Are, there's joints there. This guy's really soft rubber, so it's hard to see, but you can see how that is articulated. All these legs move. And the front arms, I think they move as well. Nope, maybe not. But the tail does. The tail's got some good articulation. It's got this spike on there. And so this can almost be used as like his little sidekick, how some of the G.I. Joes would come with animal sidekicks. So he's got a little robotic scorpion that can accompany him. Or you can put it on his backpack uh, and you can carry it around with him. So yeah, pretty cool. Now you can't, there, are, there is articulation on there. You can see that on this one. So there is some articulation on the front legs. So this guy's scorpion is red and his color scheme is red and black with some brown mixed in there as well. But otherwise it's the same figure. And again, I really kind of like this design. It's not like 
the coolest of Cobra Troopers, which is why he's at number 19, but it's a neat idea. And so like the Swamp Rat, I think this guy probably looked better in some of the, uh, the promotional artwork and stuff. And I really would have liked to have seen characters like him and Swamp Rat maybe redone in the modern era of G.I. Joe, or maybe even if we could get them in the classified line. Because then I think there's a lot of great design elements here that maybe just didn't work because of some kind of weird proportions. A lot of the figures in the New Sculpt era were kind of wonky proportioned. I'm not going to really show you any with really bad proportions because those are the guys that got weeded off of the list. Um, like the Alley Viper, for example, was ridiculous looking. But anyway, here's Sand Scorpion, and I think he is pretty cool. Now at number 18, I've got the Night Creeper. So the Night Creeper, the first one of these was released in 2003. And in from the years from 2003 to 2005, there were actually six different Night Creepers released. Now five of them were repaints of this figure that you see in front of you here, which is a new sculpt figure, all new parts. And then there was also one uh, Night Creeper release that was a repaint of the uh, vintage figure from the classic line. So. I don't really count him as part of it, but uh, so there, there was essentially five versions of this version of the Night Creeper. Now I do have the vintage Night Creeper that I can bring up for a comparison, but I really don't want to drag out any of my vintage Joes. I'm still kind of bummed about breaking a couple of them, but I do have the, uh, the modern version of the Night Creeper. So this is based on the vintage look. So this is how the, uh, the vintage Night Creeper would have looked. He had this kind of like, I don't know what you call this, like cowl around his head he's got the visor he's got that three-plated body armor on his chest he's got that purple and uh, kind of gray camo so that's what the night creeper of the vintage line looked like so this new night creeper this is the first character i'm showing you that's actually a redo of a character from the vintage line but you can see they have drastically changed the look of them they didn't take any elements from the vintage figure I'm sure he's got some plated armor still, but otherwise the visor is gone, the color scheme is gone, the hood is gone. This is basically a brand new character. They could have called it something else and, you know, it would have been fine. But, uh, and I know I just said I wasn't going to show you any figures with bad proportions. This is probably the closest we're going to get. So you can see how uh, these new sculpt figures, like look how long his legs are compared to his torso and his arms hang down to almost his knees. He's got kind of a weird... I don't know, simian proportions. So yeah, that's what kind of brings this figure down some, is how kind of wonky he looks. But I still like this figure in part because there were so many variations. And at the time where I was enjoying army building my figures, it was nice to not have to buy the same figure over and over and over again to buy it, to get an army. It was nice when there was figures like this where you could get a couple different colors and say, okay, I've built a nice little army of night creepers but uh, you know they're not all the exact same so here you're getting a nice close look at them so they've got that kind of armor plating on the face and it carries through the whole design he's got that i guess you could call it a scale pattern through the legs through the knees the chest and the head the back is pretty plain so uh, like i said there's five variations of this guy i only have four of them um, and he was released in various ways, I think in two packs and single packs. He might have even come with a vehicle um, and with different accessories. Not very ninja-like accessories. The Night Creeper is supposed to be the Cobra Ninja, but this guy here, he just came with a rifle, and he also came with some weird like hover robot. This guy here didn't come with any accessories. So this is the red repaint, which I think looks pretty nice, the red and silver. Then you get this bright green one here. He came with an Uzi. Now at least he's got a sword that can be uh, sheathed on his back. So yeah, that guy's pretty nice. It's kind of green and gold, which complement each other nicely. And then this guy here is even brighter gold on purple. But yeah, otherwise it's all the exact same figure, the same sculpt, just different paint jobs. And again, I'd be hard pressed to pick my favorite of the four like this guy here is maybe the most boring looking but for somebody that's supposed to creep around at night his costume makes the most sense um one thing i do like about these two in the middle is i like the green eyes it kind of makes them look more i don't know alien or 
supernatural in a way. It's just a little creepier. So I kind of like that element as opposed to these two on the ends that have the, uh, the human eyes. But either way, it's a, it's a decent figure, and I like that there were so many different variations of this guy. So there you go. This is the Night Creeper at number 18. So at number 17, I kind of lumped two figures together. These guys are the Snow Serpents and the Snow Wolves. Um, and that name, I think, was kind of used interchangeably. There was a couple different variations of these guys. I think there was five variations in total. You're looking at three of them. Uh, I don't have all of them. So I know there's four figures in front of you, but the two in the middle are identical. That was a case of me trying to build a little squad of them. So uh, yeah, the Snow Serpent, the Snow, this guy here. So he was released in 2002, and then the, uh, the, the variations all came out from 2002 to 2005. So this guy here, when he first came out, I wasn't all that excited about him. I think he is decent looking, but... His head maybe seems a little small. He's just, like, he's okay. Like, he's a brand new figure, new sculpt. He's got the fur boots, the big kind of fur cape, which is pretty cool. And, you know, the head looks nice. Now, these guys here are basically updates of the Snow Serpents from the Vintage line. Now, the Snow, per snow Serpent was a fan favorite of the Vintage line because he was really cool. He had lots of accessories. Um, I'm not going to bring up my Vintage one, but I will bring out one of the modern era ones. So this was a update of the classic Snow Serpent. So you can see that kind of cool blacked out mask he has. And they've got the goggles, the fur collar, the fur trim on his costume. He's got that pouch around his waist. And he's got snowshoes. Um, he's got this pack that carries a missile launcher on it. Just like a lot of stuff. Really cool figure. So not only was the classic figure great, but so was the uh, modern update. So this guy here, he just had big shoes to fill. So I don't think he was as good as the, the classic Snow Trooper. I kind of wanted to see something a little closer. If they're going to redo a classic character, now mind you, this guy was called Snow Wolf, so it is different than Snow Serpent. But uh, yeah, so he was decent. But I thought their next take on it was a lot better, which was this guy. So again, this is another brand new sculpt figure, but he doesn't share any parts with that figure. This guy is brand new, but a lot of the same design elements. So he's got the fur on the boots, on the hands. You see he's got removable snowshoes here, but this is kind of a more modern snow cleat instead of like these big snowshoes. And he's still got the fur cape, and he's got the head of the wolf on the back of the cape, which is really cool. And then the helmet. I love the helmet. This was closer to the design of the snow serpent, I feel. So really cool. And for the first time, the snow serpent could remove his mask and pop that helmet off. And then he's got like just a ski mask underneath, which I thought was really cool. I always like when their helmets come off, especially when you've got a cool head underneath and then an even cooler head when you put this on. So it's like a win-win situation. So yeah, I thought this guy was awesome. Um, then they repainted this guy, but then they decided to kind of make it even more of an homage to the, uh, the snow serpent. And they went with the classic colors. So instead of, brown on gray now they went with the blue on white so this is the same figure so still got the fur he doesn't have the fur cape instead he has the pack with the uh the tab for the missile launcher on the side now he's got the blue pack here on his waist which is much larger than you see the little pack this guy has so this guy has a big removable pack it doesn't really fit all that well you can see it's kind of falling off of him here so yeah, that doesn't work quite as well. And then the helmet, so it's the same thing, same helmet, removable. Pop that off, it's got a ski mask underneath, which is really cool. But I just don't think it looks as good in this paint as it did on this one. Like little things like how they painted, like that gray piece on the front of his mask. You know, it kind of looks like a breather that just covers his mouth and nose. Whereas here, the, the black is more like a full face mask. And I just don't think it looks as good. The goggles look a little smaller there against that big full black face mask. Whereas here the goggles look to fit a little bit more appropriately. So yeah, I think this was the more successful, even though this was more the homage to the classic figure. But uh, either way, this is a, a really cool set of figures. I always liked my Cobra Winter Troopers. And this probably would have ranked higher on the list 
Um, you know, except this guy kind of brings the whole group down a little bit. Um, but yeah, if, if this had been the only update, he would have been very high up on the list because, yeah, he's really cool. So this is my number 16 slot, and it's a bit of a cheat. So what you're looking at here is a version of Scrap Iron. This is Scrap Iron version 4, and it was released in 2005. So this was part of the DTC, or direct-to-consumer version. So after, uh, you know, Valor vs. Venom had run its course and Hasbro wasn't going to sell it retail anymore, they went with the DTC, and they gave us this upgrade of Scrap Iron. Now, it's a pretty radical redesign for Scrap Iron, uh, who is a unique character um, from the vintage line, and he was kind of Cobra's, I don't know, munitions specialist, I guess. And... Uh, the original version of him, uh, I have it in my vintage collection, I'm not going to drag it out, but they did do a repaint of that vintage scrap iron. So this is just what the vintage toy looked like, except this guy's in lighter colors. Um, I think this one might have come from a comic book pack, which is why uh, the colors are lighter. They usually try and get brighter colors for the comic book figures. But the mold here is exactly what we got on scrap iron. So scrap iron had these big goggles, and he had this helmet with the Cobra logo on it, then he had this vest with some explosives on it here. You can see there's been some discoloration here. That happens over time. I think he was all this color blue at one point or another, but this has kind of changed on me. Um, so yeah, Scrap Iron has always been a cool character. Um, and this is the look that I like for him. Um, the first three versions of Scrap Iron were all this figure, just repainted different ways. And then for version four, they gave us this radical redesign. So with this design here, you can see it's very, I don't know, crustacean-like. Like some of these armor bits, they almost look like they could come off of a crab or something, I feel. Um, but yeah, he's got this kind of like lined undersuit. And then these kind of big bulky chunks of armor with all these little rivets over it. Uh, and yeah, it's just kind of an odd design. It's not a bad design. It's maybe a little hampered by some wonky proportions, like very skinny little waist and stuff like that. But overall, I think the design is pretty cool. Um, now, the only problem with a redesign of a main character like that is when you get a new scrap iron and you decide to put him in your diorama, then what becomes of your old scrap iron? Is he redundant? You can't have two scrap irons running around. So uh, there's a couple reasons. With this guy, I decided to make him my own character, and I called him Scrap Viper. And the Scrap Vipers were like a battalion of troopers that followed Scrap Iron. He was the leader of their squad. And the reason I did that, not because I necessarily loved this design so much, but I thought it was cool. And at the time, there were certain figures that you could find on eBay in lots for really cheap. I don't know what was going on in China, but I think there was probably workers that were stealing them you know, off of the conveyor belt or something, stuff in their pockets with extra troopers on their way home. Because you could get a lot of, say, five of the exact same figure for, I don't know, 10 bucks or something. It, you know, we're going back a ways. We're talking 20 years ago now. But uh, it was really cheap, even for that time. You're like, wow, I can get all these figures from some Chinese seller for, you know, maybe they didn't have their accessories, which was often the case. Um, but this scrap iron, I, I think I did buy at least one official version from Hasbro and the rest I got off eBay. He came with two weapons. He came with this big giant rifle and he came with this little pistol. So I've got one guy displayed with each of them here. I think most of these guys I do have weapons for, but uh, yeah, so that's why I decided to kind of build these guys into an army and then give them their own little backstory because I was able to get a bunch of them for cheap. I liked the figure, but I didn't really have a need to have six or seven scrap irons running around it just didn't make sense so i got it and i called it scrap viper and it's hard for me to see it as anything else now because that's the way i displayed it for so long i had scrap iron leading them um and yeah it was a cool little uh cool little design and that's where your imagination has to kick in from time to time that's what toys are all about so even though this is kind of a cheat i would recommend if you can get a bunch of these guys get yourself some scrap vipers in my number 15 spot, I've got the Cobra Moray. So this guy was released in 2002. Uh, and then there are two other variations of him released that same year. So you can see all three of them right here. And then I believe there was a fourth version released that was primarily blue. But I think they might have changed his name by then. So I think these are the three official Cobra Morays. 
But anyway, so this guy here was part of the very first wave of G.I. Joe versus Cobra two packs that came out in 2002 to usher in the return of G.I. Joe. And I got to tell you, I was so excited about these figures. I had first seen an article about them coming out in Toy Fair magazine. And at the time, it was just the right... I was at the right age. I was at the right place in my life where I was ready for G.I. Joe to come back. And so they showed the concept art for these figures, including a new Cobra Diver in the vintage line. Uh, Cobra had the Cobra Eels. Um, they also had Undertow. But this was a brand new diver called the Cobra Moray. He looked fantastic in the artwork. And I think the figure is really cool too. Now, I might as well address the elephant in the room right off the bat. Some people will hate this figure because all of the early figures in the G.I. Joe vs. Cobra line, they took away the O-ring, which is that little elastic inside of the G.I. Joes that allowed them to have kind of swivel around at the waist. And by doing that, they took away the, uh, the way the legs normally work. So this is what we call a T-crotch. So this is what you'd expect to see on cheaper figures, where this is just like a T-shape and the legs can only go forward and backwards. There's no ability to do any sort of splits or anything like that. You know, that's the kind of thing you would expect to see on like a dollar store figure. Um, there was a ton of like negative fan reaction when these first when these first wave of figures came out. People saying these aren't G.I. Joe's, we need that elastic waistband. And they did quickly fix that. I think that's probably why we got a lot of uh, classic sculpt figures very early on in the line because Hasbro needed some time to work on their new sculpts to fix them, but they had some of the old figures laying around, so they just kind of added those to the G.I. Joe versus Cobra line to quickly get some figures out with the proper articulation. But it, to be honest, it doesn't bother me all that much. It might have bothered me when I was playing with toys, but at this point in time, I was just using them for display. And I think these guys look cool. And that's the main thing. Like this guy kind of looks like Darth Vader. He's got this like, you know, I don't know, control panel on his chest. This really cool mask with the breather on there. And then he's got these removable flippers. So you can take those off of him there. Then he's got this kind of weird space age underwater gun. And he also comes with a trident. So really cool accessories. And just like a really cool design. Um, it kind of had some similarities to the eel, so it seemed to pay homage to that a little bit. But he was kind of his own thing, and it was just exciting to get some new troopers. And uh, I really like that initial black design. It's probably my favorite of the bunch. This red design here is maybe... The red's kind of a little flat. It looks like a cheap toy. Again, kind of a dollar store looking figure. And yeah, it just kind of takes away some of the mystery. The other guy being all black... But this guy here, you can see all the sculpted detail and it. it just doesn't look that great in red. And then you've got this version here, which is kind of a, a nice middle ground. Um, the black one might have been a little too dark to hide some of the details. The red one's a little too flat. But this maroon and purple version here with the gray, I think he looks pretty good. So again, the biggest fault for these figures is the articulation and for... Some Joe fans I know this wouldn't even make the top 20 list for that reason alone, but uh, I don't mind it so much. And with most of the other figures that were released in that first wave, um, Hasbro re-released those exact figures with the uh, O-ring, but the Cobra Moray never got the O-ring treatment. So the only Morays you're ever going to find are these ones here with the T-crotch. So if you like the design of these guys, you're just going to have to deal with it. So in my number 14 spot, I have the Cobra Saw Viper. Now the Saw Viper was a character that existed in the vintage line. Now I don't have that vintage figure in front of me, but this is a repaint of the classic figure. So the Saw Viper had this big visor, this kind of weird helmet. Um, he carried a really big gun around with him. And uh, I never really liked the design of the Saw Viper, to be honest with you. Um, but he played a pretty prominent role in the G.I. Joe comic books because a Saw Viper killed a bunch of named G.I. Joes in one of the issues of the comic book. So the Saw Viper was kind of infamous in G.I. Joe lore. So during the New Sculpt era, they did paint this Python Patrol version of the original Saw Viper. So this guy came in the same pack as the Python Patrol Heat Viper that I showed you earlier. But uh, yeah, this isn't really the kind of figure I'm talking about because we're, we want to focus on just the new sculpt era figures. 
So this figure here, this was released in 2006. And this is, you know, a new sculpt figure. None of these parts were shared with the vintage line. However, none of these parts were brand new for Saw Viper except for the helmet. This figure is basically a repaint of a roll bar figure that was released earlier in the line. And he's a G.I. Joe. So it just so happens that the roll bar figure was a really great base design for this figure to come from. Like, I really like the sculpted detail in this guy. You know, he's got some good bulk and weight to him because I always felt the Saw Viper should be a bigger guy. That's how he was portrayed in the comic books. And, uh, you know, this guy here, the design just didn't really meet my expectations for a trooper that could kill a whole bunch of Joes. But this guy here, he just seemed bigger and bulkier. So everything from the uh, the whole body and the head, this is all roll bar. Now, he got a new backpack that wouldn't have come with roll bar. Um, I don't know if that's the same gun that came with roll bar. But anyway, so he's got those parts. And then they gave him this removable helmet. So that's really what elevates this figure for me, is anytime you can get a removable helmet, um, it looks really good. So you plop that on there, and it kind of emulates the classic Saw Viper look. And when I say looks really good, I, you know, I know it looks stupid, but it looks good in that Saw Viper kind of way. And yeah, I think the removable, removable helmet really elevates this figure. And I just think it's such a, you know, a, an upgrade to the uh, the vintage Saw Viper design. Not to mention the vintage Saw Viper was purple and pink and it was just like a weird color. And even this guy here, it's, I don't know how else to describe that other than pink, maybe magenta or something. Um, this guy here looks, you know, much more badass in his black and maroon outfit. Uh, yeah, so there you go. That's Saw Viper. This guy was one of the direct-to-consumer figures. And he's uh, pretty cool. So in the number 13 spot, I've got the Cobra Claws. Now the Claws, C-L-A-W-S, it was a, an abbreviation for something. I can't remember what it was anymore. But uh, So this was a brand new character. There was no existing version of Cobra Claws in the vintage line. And there were seven variations of this guy uh, over the course of 2002 to when he first came out, up to 2004. So you're looking at, I think I've got six different variations here. So there's one that I don't have. Um, so this is the original one. So this guy came out like the Cobra Moray. He came out in the very first line of the G.I. Joe versus Cobra in 2002. And I really loved this guy's design. I thought that was a really cool, like unique mask that he was wearing. Um, he seemed really big, at least on the top half. Like he seems like he works out or something. He's this big buff soldier. And he'd have to be because he comes with this uh, big giant gun that originally came with the Heat Viper. But yeah, so he carries his giant bazooka around with him. So you'd, you'd have to be pretty buff. So I have this same figure twice over. Um... And yeah, just like if you look at all the design elements in him, from these like the tubes on his knee pads here, he's got the holster, he's got the pattern on his belt. You know, it's uh, it's a really cool design. Now, what a lot of fans probably don't like about this figure is the T crotch. So all the figures in Wave One had that T crotch. So this guy has it as well. Although they did release this exact same figure in these colors without the T crotch later. So this was version one of Cobra Claws. Uh, this is, I believe, the second one that came out. He also came with the big bazooka. And I've got two of these guys on hand. So this guy's got a redesign. He keeps the gold faceplate, but instead of that maroon, he's got kind of a... It's not quite black. It's... it's I don't know if it's picking up a camera. It's almost like a... It's almost a greenish gray. It's kind of a unique color to him. But I think this version looks pretty cool, too. Uh, I think I like the original the best out of all of these, but this guy is a, a pretty decent follow-up figure. And he's also got the T-Crotch, because he was released, um, you know, very soon after version 1. But then you'll notice with all these later versions, they fixed them. So he's got the, uh, the classic O-Ring crotch. So now you can see how the movement of the legs, you know, instead of just being... Oh, I'll read a little bit there. Instead of just being the, uh, you know front side you know front like this movement on the t crotch this guy can do the splits he's just got a much better range of movement the only problem is these o-rings deteriorate over time it's just a little rubber elastic and that's why most of my vintage gi joes are in two pieces now because the elastic erodes and the top half and the bottom half break apart 
So I imagine that's probably, at least in part, why Hasbro decided to do away with it when they relaunched G.I. Joe. But the fans wanted it back. And, you know, I I was not a vocal fan about needing it back. I do think it makes for a better figure, but these guys are going to break over time, which is kind of a bummer. So next time I dig these guys out, this guy might be in two parts, whereas this guy won't be. So this one here, this look here is all red with some silver. It's kind of plain. Um, so, you know, it's okay. This one here, this one was actually marketed as the Desert Cobra Claws. So he's got kind of this light tan outfit. And it makes sense. It works as a desert figure. So I like that one as well. This guy here, I don't think he necessarily had a different name. He was probably just Cobra Claws version 3 or 4 or whatever. But yeah, so this is brown on purple with some gray. Again, it doesn't look bad, but I don't think it lives up to the first two versions as far as that, that striking gold color. And then lastly, we've got this kind of urban camoed one. Now this guy came in a two-pack with an urban uh, camoed version of another Cobra Trooper that we're going to look at later. Um, I can't say that I really like this pattern. And uh, yeah, so this is my least favorite of the Cobra Claws, but it's still not bad. So there you go. This is a, a cool new Cobra type, a trooper type. And uh, yeah, that's why he is at, uh, you know, kind of midway up my list at number 13. In my number 12 spot, I've got the Sand Viper. So the first Sand Viper was released in 2003, and there were five variations in total. So four more repaints uh, between 2003 and 2005. You're looking at three different versions of them right here. So these three here. Those guys are all identical figures that I built a little squad of. And then we've got two other versions of uh, Sand Viper here. So yeah, this guy's got a pretty cool design. And he, again, is a brand new character. There was no versions of Sand Viper in the vintage line. So a completely new design. Now these two versions here, they both came with a little pet sidekick. He came with this, I don't know, I guess he's a Komodo dragon or something. So pretty cool lizard design. And he's a good size too. Like, as opposed to Croc Master, he came with a crocodile, and the crocodile was probably smaller than this Komodo dragon, so kind of underwhelming. So, yeah, these guys are pretty cool. So, let's take a look at the figure. So, it's a, it's a cool design. So, he's got the Cobra logo on the knee pads there. Lots of little sculpted detail throughout. Cobra logos on his shoulders. And if we look at the head sculpt here, so this guy's got a removable helmet which, again, as I mentioned, is always really cool. So he's got this one here with the uh, kind of night vision visor flip down, but then you can pop that off. And then he's got this kind of odd little head underneath where he's got a breather similar to the, uh, the sand viper, or the, the swamp rat, I mean. And then you can see his ears here, which is kind of odd. And yeah, then this piece on the brow, and then he's got these kind of red, scary monster-like eyes. So it's kind of hard to know what's going on with this guy. Like, what's his deal? But uh, this guy, I believe, was another Venomized Trooper. I might be wrong about that. Let's see. If he was first released in 2003. Actually, I think that was more during the Spy Troops era. So maybe he wasn't Venomized. So you see this guy here. He was mostly gray with tan. This guy here is almost like the reverse of that. And uh, both this guy and that guy came with this big, like, flak vest. And I don't know why. It doesn't look... Good. It doesn't fit on him very well, but I figured I should at least show it to you since a couple of the versions of Sand Viper came with it. Um, but yeah, you can pop that off. So first off, his helmet. You can see there he's got the night vision as well. The same kind of weird head underneath. But this vest just barely buckles on the side. It's got these two parts that fold over. So you can take those off and then this thing just pulls up over his head pretty easily. And then you can see all that sculpted detail underneath. Um, besides the animal and the vest, he came with uh, a big rifle, which you see here, and then he's also got like a little handgun as well. And so now let's take a look at this version here that I was able to get a couple extra versions of. So this guy here I would consider maybe like the Night Sand Viper. You know, he's dressed for a night mission with his black suit and gold highlights. Again, the little uh, helmet with the night vision comes off. 
Now these guys have some different accessories. These guys did not come with the lizard. And you can see they have Firefly's old backpack on there. So they all have that. And they didn't come with the, uh, the little plate on the back of the backpack, interestingly enough. Firefly had this backpack in the vintage line, but there was a little cover to cover this area here. But they just have their little toolkit exposed. Um, so yeah, another really cool trooper. And it was nice to get new characters, not just rehashes of what we've gotten before. And with these guys, I'm pretty hard pressed to pick a favorite. I think I probably like the black ones the best, but considering that he is a sand viper and meant for like desert missions, the other two guys costumes probably make more sense for the environment. But uh, like I said, if you sent this guy out on night missions in the desert, then maybe this works. So overall, pretty cool. So in my number 11 spot, I've got another cheat. This is actually Wild Weasel version 5. So Wild Weasel is a unique individual character. Now he is the, uh, he was the original Cobra pilot. He came with the Rattler jet back in the vintage line. And he was a favorite of mine. I absolutely loved my Wild Weasel figure. Um, now I'm not going to break out the vintage one. But I do have the modern one. So this is Wild Weasel. So this is an upgrade to what the uh, the vintage figure from like, what year did he come out? Maybe 85? Um, so this is an upgrade to that figure. So yeah, you can see the pilot look with the helmet there, those goggles, the pouches. He's got the maps on his uh, the legs of his pants. So a really cool figure. Um, I think some people think that the vintage figure had too large of a head. Um, and maybe he did. But that didn't really bother me. I thought it was a really cool design. So yeah, I always loved Wild Weasel. Now, in the new sculpt years, they actually did give us uh, two new versions of Wild Weasel in 2004. So the first one is this guy here. So he's very similar to the classic and later the modern version. So he's all red. With, and he's got some of these brown buckles. He's got these kind of gold visor. He's got a parachute pack. I thought it was a really cool upgrade to Wild Weasel. And they did shrink his head down to size. So it was a little more manageable. So yeah, I thought this was really cool. I was really happy to get an upgraded Wild Weasel in my, uh, you know, well, we didn't really call it New Sculpt at the time. But when I was collecting these in 2002, 2003. So when I got this version here, I was very happy to have an upgrade to my Wild Weasel. But the same year this came out. We get a repaint of it. Let me just set this guy down here for a second. So yeah, we got a repaint of this figure in these uh, red and black colors. Now, even though this is kind of a different look for Wild Weasel, I actually thought this was really cool looking. I liked this a lot. So it's the same figure. Like if we get him up close, you can see all the same sculpted designs but uh, they just went with this black color scheme and I thought it looked great. So now I had these two really cool versions of Wild Weasel and I kind of had to decide which one of the two I was going to put in my diorama display. And then in 2005, they took this figure again and they repainted it in solid, not quite black, it's more like a, like a dark blue. And then you can see the black visor. But that's really the only like color difference on this figure otherwise he's pretty much just cast in that solid blue from head to toe with the black visor so this is kind of like a night missions wild weasel i guess so i already loved this figure so i was definitely going to get this version but this happened to be one of the figures that was readily available on ebay um, you could buy lots of them for really cheap and I wasn't really sure why, but I wasn't going to turn them down. So I got a couple different lots of Wild Weasel, and I ended up with about 10 of them here. And again, I don't really need 10 versions of Wild Weasel, because even with just two of them, I was having trouble deciding which of these guys was going to be the go-to Wild Weasel in my display. So when I got all of these guys here, what I decided to do is I decided to make them Weasel Vipers. So just like my Scrap Vipers, I just assigned them... It, like as a squad to one of my named Cobras. So now Wild Weasel was leading this whole squadron of Weasel Vipers, which made sense because, uh, you know, there's all kinds of jets and helicopters in the uh, Cobra, like, armory or whatever. 
But uh, you know, usually in the cartoon, it would always you always see characters like Baroness and Destro flying the helicopters, which didn't really make sense. Why not send Cobra pilots out there? So this gave me a way to army build a whole bunch of Cobra pilots on a really cool designed figure. Now, mind you, I will say this this figure here is uh, on its own. Like if these figures had never come out, the two red ones, I would be pretty disappointed with this Wild Weasel because it is pretty bland with like almost no paint apps. Um, like on its own, it's not necessarily a great figure, but for my purposes to give Wild Weasel an army of faceless guys wearing his outfit and Weasel Vipers, I just thought that was a really cool idea. I was glad I came up with it. And uh, yeah, so I love these dudes. And if I had room to display them all together as a squadron, I would, but unfortunately they're gonna go back into storage after this video. But I would recommend if you're by any chance collecting these this era of G.I. Joe figures, and you maybe decide you're going to buy one of each unique character. This is a good guy I'd recommend that you get multiple of and have your own little army of weasel vipers. Now in my number 10 spot, I've lumped two different troopers together here. So it's again, it's a bit of a cheat, but I've got the Razor Trooper from 2004, as well as the Jungle Viper from 2005. So uh, the Razor Trooper came out first, but earlier in that same year, they put out an original character named razor claw and he used this body so razor claw looked like this from the neck down different colors but he had these bladed effects kind of like wolverine or something with these like swords that attached to his hands and then they released uh this trooper and they just gave him this kind of more generic masked head which i really like anytime they can find a new variation for just like a full face shield you know kind of like cobra commander head or the viper head you know, it's always cool when they can find unique ways to do that. And I think it looks really good on the uh, the Razor Trooper here. So this was the only version of the Razor Trooper that they ever released. But they did take the same head and torso. They changed up the arms and the legs because this guy doesn't need bladed effects. But this guy is the Jungle Viper. And they released two variations of him, both in 2005. They were both just kind of different shades of green. So I only have one of them here. But again, I think it looks really cool. I like how they uh, painted the face shield with that kind of metallic speckled blue. And then the green and the browns look really nice on him. So this is another pretty cool trooper. Um, there was no versions of either the Razor Trooper or the Jungle Viper in the uh, original line. Now in the modern line, they did do a new version of Jungle Viper, but he was quite a bit different than this one. He didn't really share any of the same design elements other than the fact that he was green. But still, it's pretty cool that they revisited this guy uh, quite a few years later. So there you go. Razor Trooper and Jungle Viper. Now in my number nine spot, I have the Cobra Imperial Guard from 2005. And this is the only version of the Imperial Guard that has ever existed. They did not have these characters in the original classic line, nor did they have them in the modern line. Now, this is also a bit of a cheat. These are the only figures on my list that don't contain any new sculpt parts. So normally these figures would have been eliminated because they're kind of repaints of uh, real American hero parts, kind of like the Ice Viper and the Heat Viper I showed you at the beginning. But why I counted these guys on the list is because it's not just a repaint of an existing trooper like Heat Viper and Ice Viper. This is a new character that they've taken existing parts and mishmashed them together. So most notably, the uh, the chest piece here and the arms, like those are from the armored Cobra Commander figure. So that was Cobra Commander version 3 from the vintage line. And then the head, it's this very, you know, memorable, recognizable head from the Cobra Range Viper from the original line. And they had these very creepy heads where you could almost see like the brain matter on the top of their helmet. And then they had these skeletal faces with teeth. And it was kind of hard to know what was going on with those guys. Like, were they mutated or monstrous? Or was that all just a weird elaborate helmet? It, they were just strange to me. And so for this set here, it was part of the Cobra Imperial Precision or set. I can't remember exactly what it was called. Uh, Imperial Procession, I think is what it was. And it had a Cobra Commander in a red hooded outfit that came with a throne. It also came with a red Baroness. And then it came with these four guys. So these four figures are identical. So I didn't really seek these guys out to army build them. They all came in one package together. 
And the only accessory they had is this flag. So it's on the top of a cobra staff. And then it's got this kind of loose kind of vinyl-y flag on the outside of it that shows a cobra logo with kind of a lightning bolt through it. But otherwise, uh, yes, yeah, so that's about it. But I think these guys are really neat looking. I love that range of iron helmet. It's kind of scary and mysterious. Um, it looks good with the armor. And I like this color scheme with the, um, the red, the gold, and the black. It looks very regal. And they looked pretty cool when you displayed Cobra Commander sitting on his throne and you had two of these guys on each side of him. So that's why uh, I've got this guy ranked up at number nine. So at number eight, I've got the Crimson Guard. So there was multiple variations of the Crimson Guard released from 2004 to 2005. Um, there was basically five variations of the classic Crimson Guard. And then there was one new version of the Crimson Guard um, that was a completely new sculpt. So I've got both of them here. So this side here, these are the guys that are based on the classic look. So if you look at one of these figures, from the neck down, this figure is the exact same as the uh, Crimson Guards that we got in the vintage line. And he looks very similar as far as the paint scheme goes. Now the one, uh, the one major difference between these figures here and the vintage Crimson Guard is that the vintage Crimson Guard had a sculpted headpiece um, it did not have a removable mask. These guys here have removable masks. So that's what makes the new sculpt is that they've give, they've been given a new head. And it's a pretty cool head. So the helmet, it's a, a little oversized looking perhaps. But I don't mind that considering the feature of being able to remove the helmet. I think that's really cool. And then you see he's got the little masked head, which is pretty standard for Cobra Troopers underneath. So that, that was a really cool feature. So you can see here, I've got uh, a couple of Crimson Guards, and they might look the same on the outside, but when you take their helmets off, they've got different variations. So where the other guy had black hair, this guy's got red hair. And another thing that was really cool that they kind of started doing during the uh, new sculpt era was giving us troopers of different nationalities. So here we have an African-American Crimson Guard, so that's really cool. I think that everybody gets uh, represented here. That's pretty neat. And then lastly, you'll see another one here. This is the same figure, just in all black. And this is from a set that was called the Shadow Crimson Guard, I believe. So same idea, you remove the helmet and then you've got the same head underneath there as well. And this guy here, I, I also believe came in multiple different hair colors and nationalities as well, but I just have the single figure here. And then in the direct to consumer years, we got this brand new Crimson Guard. So I've got four of them here. But you see, this is a completely new design that's inspired by the classic design. So he's still got that very similar face with the little breathing or the breather, I don't know what we call that in the front. He's got the visor, he's got the red helmet. Now he still looks, you know, very kind of formal with that like double breasted coat type of thing because um, the Crimson Guard are supposed to be kind of the elite. They're not really meant for the field. And you see he's got the classic Crimson Guard backpack there. So, you know, it's got all the similar looks and characteristics. Like this guy looks like a Crimson Guard, but uh, yeah, he's completely new sculpt. And uh, yeah, so it's pretty cool. It's nice to have some variety. So rather than just having, you know, 20 of these guys all standing beside one another to add some of these guys into the ranks, you know, they look like they belong together, but uh, yeah, they're different enough. That just gives you some variety. So there you go. Both versions of the Crimson Guard. Pretty cool. And that's why he's at number eight. So at the number seven spot, I've got the Range Viper version two. So the original Range Viper was included in the classic Real American Hero line. This guy here came out in 2005. This was part of the direct-to-consumer line. And uh, so he's new sculpt is that he figures or in that he's made up of parts from the uh, new sculpt years. But most of these parts are reused from pre-existing figures. Like you'll notice for accessories. So he comes with two guns. I've got him displayed with his larger rifle here. But he's also got two knives that sheathe on his legs. And if that looks familiar, that's because the, uh, the legs and a lot of the body comes right from the Swamp Rat, who we looked at earlier. So he's reusing Swamp Rat parts. He's also got some Destro parts in there. So, you know, they're new pieces from the last couple of years, but they're not new for the first time with this figure. So 
I don't have the uh, the vintage Range Viper here to show you. He's packed away. But I do have the modern version of the Range Viper. And here he is here. So this guy is modeled after the classic Range Viper as far as the colors go with the blue and the yellow. This one here from the new sculpt years is quite a bit different. Like it's a new take on it it's with these colors, the blue and the gray. But one thing they do introduce here is this new helmet. So if you recall, just a couple of uh, spots ago, we looked at the Imperial, uh, the Imperial Guard, and he was using the old Range Viper head from version one, which was that head with the skull face and the brain. Well, this one here, so they got rid of that brain pattern on the top, but it finally answers the question about are these guys weird, freaky mutants with monster faces, or is it all just an elaborate helmet, in that the helmet comes off and he's got a pretty straightforward masked head underneath of there. So that's really cool. I, I like these removable helmets. They're very neat looking. So all in all, he comes together really well. I like the like bullet belt or the bandolier that he's got on there. That really, you know, makes him look different than say the Swamp Rat or some of the guys who uh, he shares parts with. That really makes him distinct. And you can see they kind of carried over that helmet into the, uh, the modern line. I guess they were pretty pleased with it considering they just sculpted it. Uh, you know, just a couple of years prior, and it works pretty much the same way. So it's a different head underneath, but uh, yeah, I really like that design. And there you go. So that's the Range Viper at uh, number seven. At number six, I have the Cobra Viper. Now, the Viper is a classic Cobra character. He basically replaced the original, the original Cobra Trooper, sometimes called the Blue Shirt, which formed the base of the Cobra Infantry. Um, so the original Cobra Infantry came out in 1982, and then the Viper, uh, it was like 85 or 86 when we first got him. And after that point, it was usually the Vipers that were featured in the cartoons and stuff, basically replacing the blue shirt. So yeah, these are a popular character. And during the, uh, the new sculpt years, there was actually 12 different variations of the Viper released. But eight of those were repaints of the classic vintage Viper from the 80s. Now, I'm not gonna bring out any vintage Vipers. I do have a modern era Viper. So this guy here is based on the original, like I said, I can't remember if it was 85 or 86. I'll say 86 Viper. So this is what they looked like. They had that full chrome face plate, the goggles on the top of their hat. Man, these guys are dusty, by the way. Um, black vest with the red grenades the blue pants, you know, the red guards on their arms. So yeah, this is what a Viper looked like. So this is a really nice upgrade in the modern era. But before this guy came along, this is what we got. So I think the first Viper that came out in the new sculpt years was this guy. And so he's pretty cool. I like the design of him. The other, the original Viper from the 80s had a pretty big head as well, kind of like the Wild Weasel. So this guy kind of fixed that issue the head's a little more you know properly sized now that doesn't mean this guy's proportions are perfect he's probably still got too small of a torso here but uh you know what are you gonna do but overall like i like this look like the the kind of padded chest there the helmet with the goggles like you can definitely tell this is a viper and the viper was released in multiple colors in the vintage line and stuff and uh, so that this red and purple one you know it fits with uh you know it looks like it could definitely be a Viper, a normal variation. So he was pretty cool. And I think following him, we got the Python Patrol Viper. So the same figure, but uh, painted with the black and gold and gray. And the thing that really makes this guy Python Patrol is this little bit of kind of checkered pattern on his chest. And there's a little bit more of it on the inside of his legs. That was the thing that tied Python Patrol together. When the concept of Python Patrol was released, in the 80s it was that they painted their vehicles and wore this this pattern on their clothes and that would disguise them from radar or something like that so uh yeah so we got the python patrol viper and uh so i was happy with the sculpt the paint jobs were fine but i think me and a lot of other fans wanted to see this sculpt used to represent the classic viper so i think we got this guy first which does a pretty good job he's in the blue and red silver logo on his chest but otherwise 
He's the same figure as what we got on the previous two versions. And then I believe this guy was the last one to come out. And it's my personal favorite. This one is the most true to the, uh, the classic one as far as the color scheme goes. With that blue and that red, the black on the chest with the red cobra emblem there. Looks really cool. So I'm happy with all of these Vipers. And it's nice that we got so many different colors. So that I could build a little army and it was still diverse. And you can see this is one of the figures that I went a little crazy army building, but not too bad. Like, I consider a squad of three is a reasonable squad to have. So with three of these guys, three of these guys, and I got four of these guys, only one of him. Uh, there probably would have been a lot more. But with some of these guys, these this was a highly, highly desirable figure. Everybody wanted to build armies of vipers. And this was not the type of figure you could go on eBay and buy ten of them for five bucks or anything. I had to pay full price for all of these guys. And probably even a little bit of a markup because they were in demand. So I still managed to build a nice little army of vipers anyway. So there you go. That is the Cobra Viper, sometimes called the Viper Guard during the New Sculpt years. But there you are at number six. Now in my number five spot, I've got the classic Cobra Trooper or the blue shirt, which I just mentioned had been replaced in the vintage line by the Cobra Viper. But uh, yeah, this guy has withstood the test of time. He's still a classic G.I. Joe character. He was one of the first characters to be made in the new G.I. Joe classified line. So yeah, I don't think we're getting rid of blue shirts anytime soon. So with these guys, there was five different variations uh, in the new sculpt era. So from 2004 to 2006, there was four variations of the original design. And then right near the end of the line in the direct to consumer market, we got this new updated uh, new sculpt version. So let's take a look. So first off, the vintage figure, I'm not going to pull one out, but they were dressed in blue and they had uh, black straps and they had black masks. Now in the cartoon and the comic book, sometimes they appeared with red masks. So what we've got here, these two figures are exactly what the vintage figure looked like. So this is straight out of 1982, except it's repainted in comic book colors. So instead of black straps, he's got yellow, and instead of a black mask, he's got red. So this is the Cobra Trooper repainted to look like the comic book. This alone would not have made it to my list. It wouldn't have qualified under my rules because it's completely reused parts from the vintage line. Now, in the vintage line, there was a Cobra, Tro Cobra Trooper, and then there was also a Cobra Officer. So this is what you're seeing here. This is what the Cobra Officer looked like. He had a little bit more detailed like web gear with more pouches and stuff. And he also had the emblem on his helmet that the other guy didn't have. It's unpainted here, so it might be a little hard to pick up. But so here you have the officer and the trooper repainted from the comic book pack. So it was pretty cool to get these variations. But when you see these guys, you pretty much know exactly what the vintage figures would have looked like. And so the next thing we got, which was super cool, was they did these Cobra infantry packs. And it was six figures of just Cobra Troopers all packed together. And there was some nice diversity amongst the group, which was really cool. So you can see here, I've got four of them on display. And the reason I only have four is because these guys are susceptible to breaking. You see, I've got all these other guys and they're all in, they're all in two. Their legs have fallen off because the, uh, elect the uh, elastic washer inside of them have broken. So I've got a bunch of these guys that I can't display. Oops. So those guys are all busted up, which is unfortunate. But just to give you an idea of the diversity here, so the four figures I have displayed are the troopers. So here you have a Caucasian trooper with just the standard gear, because from the neck down, this is the exact same figure. You know, that's they didn't change anything. It's the same mold right from 1982, reused here and again reused here. But where this one's just a straight repaint with the same head, this guy here has been given a new head. So it's a little taller as far as the head goes. That one was kind of a little squatty and round. So now you've got like a taller head. They also had some new weapons. They got a new backpack and they all had rifles. So here you got a Caucasian guy with brown eyebrows. And then here you have an African-American guy. But otherwise the body is the same. So it's just the skin tone that they changed on these two figures. And the two figures that you see behind you, those are just the same two figures from the opposite pack. Now, besides troopers, they also included officers in those packages. So like, like you saw with this guy here with the extra straps, 
here we've got a couple versions of the officer. So here we've got one with the extra pouches and stuff. And you see he's got white eyebrows on there, which I like. That kind of makes him seem like he might be, you know, a little bit older, which would make sense if he's an officer now. So I liked that variation. And then there's also this variation with the red straps and the red balaclava. And what's really cool about him is if you get up close, he's got scars painted out over his eyes. It's subtle, but that's a throwback to a, a named character from the comic books called Scarface. Um, in the early days of the comic books, when the writer Larry Hama didn't have a whole lot of named characters to work with, he did this occasionally where he'd make up a character or he would take a Cobra Trooper and make them a specific character by giving them a unique feature like the scar. So that's pretty cool that we got our first kind of official Scarface figure here. So there you go. Those are all really cool, but most of them are things we've seen before from the neck down. Then over here, this is the direct-to-consumer figure. So this was completely new. So it's a new sculpt figure, but when I say completely new, I sh the parts here are all from the, the new sculpt years, but most of this figure, I think pretty much from the neck down, is from another figure called Ghost Bear, which was a new unique character to the Cobra Forces. But they took that body and they gave it a new head. And even this head isn't new. This is the same one you saw underneath the Range Viper helmet. So they've reused this head, but then we've got this helmet plop it on there doesn't fit great it falls off pretty easily but uh, I really like this look after getting dozens of these guys it was kind of nice to see a complete new update to the Cobra Trooper so I built myself a nice little army of these guys so the Cobra Trooper is got my number five spot in the number four spot I have the Cobra Meta Viper from 2005 so this was the first ever meta viper figure so this is a cobra medic and i think he's great these characters actually appeared in a couple of the marvel comics back in the 80s um, just kind of as background characters that the artist created to kind of fill in space i guess but uh, we never got a figure of them and fans kind of always wanted to see an action figure of this guy so it took us you know maybe an extra 20 years longer than we wanted but by 2005 we got the meta viper and I think he looks great. He looks a lot like uh, he did in the comic books, actually. Um, now, I actually have three of these guys, but one of them, unfortunately, is broken in half. And the other guy, oddly enough, I kept carded. So I've got him pinned up to my wall, still mint in card. Now, it was pretty unusual of me to keep carded figures at this particular time when I was collecting. But as I mentioned before, I, was, I had these guys in... A big diorama so like a big display with trees and all kinds of stuff but I think I had ordered another meta viper and it had come in just at a time when I had to take down the diorama either I was moving or I was changing some stuff around and it just didn't really make sense to open them up and just throw the loose figure in a bin with everybody until I had finished moving and got situated and when I moved things around I never ended up putting the diorama back up then the modern era of G.I. Joe started soon afterwards, and I ended up collecting those and displaying those. So, yeah, I just ended up keeping that carded Meta Viper, and now it's kind of cool that I have him because he's just kind of this relic from this era. I don't have any other carded figures from those days. So anyway, I just have one that I can open up and show you now. And yeah, he looks pretty cool. There's lots of uh, sculpted detail on there. And this body is completely reused from a figure they released earlier in the line, which was the Cobra medic called Scalpel. And so he was a completely new character, but this is the body they gave him. It was brighter green when he had it. And uh, so they took that Scalpel figure and repainted it and gave us a new head. And I think this new head is great. It's got all these kind of medical instruments attached to it. The Cobra logo sculpted on there. Some nice wrinkles in the mask. Like it's a, it's a really nice design. And you can see he's got these medical equipment on the on this chest there he's got this little buzz saw there attached to his wrist it's really cool a little bone saw i guess on the back i'm not really sure what the purpose of these are but he's got a couple of like bladed weapons it looks like and they attach to his shoulder pads which can be removed so there you go this was a, a fan favorite somebody that we wanted to see for a long time we finally got him now he's not the most exciting. He does come with a, a gun, but you know he's not really meant to be on the battlefield. This is the kind of figure if you were playing with your Cobra Troopers, these guys would all be stationed 
in your medical bay back at Cobra headquarters, so they might not see a lot of action. But uh, yeah, just a really cool member of the Cobra support team, and I'm glad we have him. Looks great. In my number three spot, I've got the Cobra Bat, which stands for Battle Android Trooper. So there were 14 variations of the Cobra Bat during the New Sculpt years from 2002 to 2005. So some of them were based on the classic design, which is what I would say these guys here are. So there were seven variations like this. Then there were five variations like this, which is kind of a bug-like design with the like antennas and stuff. Uh, and then there was a Sigma-6 design, which I don't have that figure, but that was a third kind of radical redesign of the bat during those years. So yeah, lots of variations. I don't have them all, but you can see I've got quite a bit. I've got a nice little army of bats. Now, I think the first version of the bat to come out during the new sculpt years was this version here, which I'm calling the bug or kind of grasshopper looking version. And it's not bad, but it's got pros and it's got cons. So first up, actually, before I show you him, I'm just, I'll talk about the classic bat. So the original bat released in, I want to say 86, was a robot trooper for Cobra. And it kind of made sense to introduce robot troopers because that way the GI Joes could actually hit somebody in the cartoon and blow them up. They didn't have to look incompetent by always missing the Cobra troopers. So I don't have the classic bat here to show you, but here is the modern version of the classic bat. And so this is exactly what the bat looked like. He had that same head design in the chest. On the vintage figure, it was like a lenticular sticker, but it has the same kind of details inside. He had interchangeable hands, which was a really cool feature. So this one here, he's got a claw, but you could pop that off and he stored his extra pieces in his backpack. So you can see here, he's got like a flamethrower that you could attach instead. And yeah, so that's uh, the design, black with yellow and then some red and green highlights and stuff, a really cool design. So this was a pretty radical change when they gave us this guy, uh, like the, with the grasshopper ears. And, you know, it doesn't look bad. I actually think that's a pretty cool head design. But the body, like even the chest is pretty cool. And he carried over the same functionality in that you could change his hands out. So here he, he's got like kind of a flamethrower effect. Pretty much all of these bats that you're looking at, I don't have them displayed with all their accessories. But most of them had like a flamethrower, like a grenade launcher, a bladed sword hand and then two regular hands uh, as well. So you could display them all kinds of different ways. So even if you had this same figure five or six times, you could make them all a little bit different by how you chose to display their hands. So yeah, the head, the torso, I like. I don't have a problem with any of that. But then the pants. I didn't like how he seemed to have these purple pants and then his robot legs. And then look at those feet. Like it looks like he's wearing bicycle shorts and slippers and it's just it's weird looking it's like i like that design how they kind of they look like kind of bug legs how they buck back like that like animal legs of some sort but maybe if he was just all mechanical or if they you know given him black pants over these mechanical legs i just couldn't get into that bicycle look for this guy it just looked too weird and the same problem plagues all of the repaints so here Here's a red one, same issue, slippers, bicycle shorts. You know, the red might look better than the black. I don't know, I prefer the black. But, uh, you know, so even if you think this one's cooler, it's just the same problem when you get down there. This was the, uh, the last version of this particular bat that came out with this kind of, you know, mutagen green color. And still slippers, bicycle shorts. Not a great look. So here's another one that's primarily black. He's got a blue belt and black pants instead of uh, purple pants. Uh, he's also got a red visor instead of the, the green that we see on all the other ones there. But he still has the slippers and the shorts on. So not a great look. You'll see uh, some of these guys I have displayed with this backpack, which has got a Cobra logo on the back. It's also got two hooks. So you can, you can kind of have him store some of his extra arm pieces. And then there's also this slot on the top here, which you can slide the extra bladed hand through, 
when he's not using that. So that's really cool that they had storage to hold on to other extra pieces, just like the classic bat. Lastly here, we've got this kind of rust colored one. This is probably my favorite. Um, he's got a yellow visor, but I think the bicycle shorts is the least problem on him because where he doesn't have the, the silver legs, I don't know, it just doesn't look as much like he's got shorts on to me, but you know, it's the same sculpt through and through. There's not much you can do about it. So yeah, those guys were okay. But then this design, I really liked. And you can see that there's been different variations amongst this line and you know, there's more than even what you're seeing here. So these guys here, same idea. They have the same backpack so you can store their extra, some of them have really big extra arms. He store his blade hand through here. But yeah, so this design here, it's kind of a plain face shield. It's kind of similar to the, the classic look. But, you know, still different enough so it doesn't just feel like a rehash. No bicycle shorts, no slippers. So it looks really cool. Another thing these guys had is you could pop their chest plate off. And I guess you could find their, uh, I don't know, their equivalent of their heart there. So I don't know if you wanted to say that the, Geo the Joes had to pull this off to shoot them there and to destroy them or something. It was just kind of a neat little feature. And it gave them something on their chest that tied back to the original with the lenticular sticker. So here you see the same sculpt. But here he's got yellow highlights, so this is much closer, again, to the original bat. He's still got the backpack, stores his weapons. The chest paints a little different too, so he's got yellow instead of the red and blue. Um, what did we get here? So this guy, he's the same as him, but this one looks to be the same, except you notice he's got a yellow kind of thing on his face instead of red. Otherwise, I think he's pretty much the same as those guys. His boots are a little bit different. So he's got yellow boots with silver highlights instead of silver boots with yellow highlights. So some slight differences. And some of the versions I don't have, you would have seen the same thing. Like it would have looked the same as this, except you would have had a blue thing on his face instead of a red thing. Uh, back here, we've got the same figure, but instead of silver, they've got gold. So gold arms, gold boots, all that sort of stuff. So another really cool design. I, I believe these two are identical. But yeah, you never know. Sometimes there's just slight variations on these guys. But one thing I'm noticing for the first time, now that I've pulled these guys out, um, these guys are quite a bit taller than the other figures. Like you can probably see between these guys. He's quite a bit bigger. So these guys are probably closer to four inches. Now that might have been considered an error at the time is that they were a little too tall. But uh, it actually works out pretty much perfect with a modern era figure. Because the modern era guys were four inches. So you display them next to each other. And they're like the same height. So, you know what? I'm actually thinking when I put all these figures away, I might leave, take these bats and leave them out. Because I have all my modern Joes on display currently on bookshelves. And I think these guys would actually fit in there just fine with them. So they might be better off on the shelf than just gathering just in a bin. So there you go. There's the Cobra Bats. Lots of variations at my number three spot. Now in my number two spot, I have the Cobra Televiper. Now like the Meta Viper, this guy might not seem all that exciting at first because he's kind of just a member of Cobra's support team. These are the guys that in the cartoon were always sitting at the computer terminals. They weren't really out in battle. But uh, the thing is, I hated the vintage televiper figure he just had a stupid expression on his face he had this big round head um i didn't think he was cool at all i actually ruined my vintage televiper head because i tried to make him cooler so i took a sharpie and colored over his mouth and nose to kind of make it look like he had like a balaclava mask on i thought that might make him look better but it didn't anyway i just really didn't like that televiper figure now while i'm not going to bring out my vintage televiper i do have the modern televiper which is based on that 80s figure. And here he is. And I hate this figure too. Um, again, I think he's just got a big round head. I don't like the helmet design with that little visor. Um, yeah, this was a bad figure besides. You can see the way his hands are sculpted, like really weird. He doesn't stand very well. He kind of leans funny. But all that stuff aside, just design-wise, I don't like the Televiper. I didn't like him when I was a kid. And I don't like this modern version now. So the reason this guy's so high up on my list is because I, I have to give him the most improved 
like when it comes to Cobra Vipers and Cobra Troopers, you know, I liked those designs already. So, you know, it's kind of hard to screw them up. But with Televiper, he started from such a negative spot and I think he ended up really cool. I like this guy a lot. There was actually three different variations of this guy from 2003 to 2005. I actually missed out on the first version, which was basically wearing a purple jumpsuit and he had like a blue vest, but then they repainted that figure to look like this, which is much more an homage to the classic figure with the blue jumpsuit and purple vest. So uh, yeah, I don't really care that I don't have that original one, but what I have is a bunch of version, we'll call it version three of this new sculpt Viper, and then I have one of the Python Patrol. So let's take a look at him first, maybe. So he's got that uh, Python Patrol pattern there. And now, as far as accessories go, go uh, these guys came with a bunch of stuff. I think if you combine all these guys together, you'll see all the accessories. They have this this shoulder piece here. With the antenna was supposed to stand up nice and straight, but these guys have been in storage, so it's get kind of bent up. But that piece is removable. Oh. He just dropped his gun, but they they came with like a larger rifle as well as a pistol. So some of my guys are holding their pistols. Some of them are holding their larger guns. They also came with, I don't know if you'd call this a walkie-talkie radio cell phone, but because they are the communications officers, so they all had like a little uh, walkie-talkie device. Um, they had this uh, piece here on the side of their head, their little mouthpiece there. So that's removable. So some of those guys are missing that maybe. And then they also had the classic Televiper backpack. So this is taken right off of the vintage 80s figure. So those are all the different accessories these guys came with. But uh, yeah, I just grabbed them out of the box as they were. So some of them have some accessories, some have others. Anyway, I just think it's a cool design. Like the body is pretty straightforward. He's pretty well proportioned. But it's really that head that really improved this character. I think that's actually a cool helmet. I like the way it fits on him. I like the angle of the uh, the visor and the cobra logo on there the little sculpted wires and stuff it just really works for me so much better than this i just i hate that hit so yeah so this guy's cool python patrol but even better is the other more standard figure in the classic colors so this guy this guy's got some smooch on his face so maybe i'll grab another guy here so there you go the nice kind of you know, the blue visor, it's kind of a nice metallic blue paint job with the dark blue uniform. The sculpted uh, cobra on his head is in a little different color. Then he's got all the purple highlights, a little bit of gold, a little bit of orange there just to add a little bit of color. Cobra logo on his belt. Just a really cool design. And finally, you know, this guy was cool for the first time. So I actually wanted to build a little army of these guys. And in my diorama, it made sense to have a televiper with every single squad. That's how I ended up with the number that I had. So if I had a group of range vipers or a group of crimson guards or something, I would have a, a televiper with each group, which would allow all the groups to communicate amongst themselves. So uh, yeah, really cool figure with the televiper. Now in my number one spot is my all-time favorite trooper from the new sculpt years, this is the Cobra Neo Viper, which first saw release in Wave 1 back in 2002. And uh, I love this guy from the moment I saw him. Now, I told you earlier about how I first was introduced to G.I. Joe's return through an article at Toy Fair magazine. So that's when they first showed some drawings of the Neo Viper. And they mentioned how he was kind of an upgrade to the standard Cobra Trooper, the blue shirt. And I just thought he had such a cool design. He was a little more armored up. You know, his face mask was a little more technological, a little more modern. But it still shared a lot of the elements of the Cobra blue shirt. So I just thought this guy looked great right from the get-go. And uh, they made eight different variations of the Neo Viper from 2002 to 2004. So he really did form the backbone of the Cobra forces during those years. Uh, and besides the troopers, they also made two variations of the Neo Viper Commander. Now, the Neo Viper was a brand new trooper. It did not exist in the uh, vintage toy line at all. And it doesn't really exist in the modern line at all either. They did make a modern figure called the Neo Viper, which were those troopers from the first live action movie. Um, they had the full silver heads and the black armor. 
they were basically Neo Vipers in name only. They didn't really have anything to do with this figure, so I wouldn't exactly call them an update. So as far as I'm concerned, the Neo Viper has yet to be updated from the uh, the new sculpt years. And I really hope we get to see an update. This is one of the figures I wanted most in the modern era line of G.I. Joes. It never happened. So now I'll have to cross my fingers that maybe we get this in the classified line someday. It's a, it's a long shot, but you, you never know. So anyway, let's take a look at the variations. So like I said, this came out in the very first wave. So let me grab one here. I really hope these guys don't all fall over like dominoes. I didn't have enough display bases handy, so a lot of them are just standing loose and they could all go down at any minute. But anyway, so this is the Neo Viper from Wave 1. So you'll see there that he has the dreaded T-crotch that most Joe fans hate. But I still think it has a really cool design. I love the look of this helmet. I love the, the look of the Cobra logo. It's kind of stylized. Just everything about this guy is just super cool. I like him a lot. So uh, this figure here, I think the first repaint they did of the Neo Viper was this one here, the white version. And I say that because this is the only other version. I have three of these guys. You'll see another one there, another one in the back. They all have T crotches. So this guy came up very early on and they never bothered to revisit the white Neo Viper. You could call this guy the Arctic Neo Viper or the Snow Neo Viper. I don't know. But yeah, he's basically the same as the other figure except in white. And he's got the red Cobra logo and stuff. I think this is a really cool look as well. But then the classic Neo Viper did get re-released with the standard O-ring. So that's what you're seeing here. So now you can do the splits and spread his legs and all that stuff. And when they did that... They also tweaked the paint job a little bit. So you see now he's got this full red crest on the front of his helmet that he didn't have before. So that constitutes basically another version of the figure. Okay, so I kind of lost my train of thought there because I could just hear my dog upstairs going on about a 10 minute barking rant. So I'll try and pick up where I left off. So we've got the two blue variations. Then we had the white variation. This guy here, I only have one of this guy. So this is kind of the urban camo variation. You might remember I had a Cobra Claws figure in this same uh, color scheme. So this was the Neo Viper that he was packaged with. So they were kind of like a little urban assault team together. Um, I mentioned how this camo was my least favorite version of the Claws and it's my least favorite version of the Neo Viper as well. I just don't think it really looks all that great. Um, here's another one I only have one version of. And that's because he's pretty plain looking. He's in this kind of, it's almost metallic-y brown, bronze, I don't know, with this purple Cobra logo. It's not a very flattering color scheme. It's not a very exciting color scheme. So yeah, I got one of them just as a completist, but I didn't love him enough to army build him. This is another one I only have one of. And this guy is pretty solid, like a dark blue with a black face. And then a little bit of gold highlights. He kind of matches up pretty well with that wild weasel that I bought in bulk as a weasel viper. He kind of looks very similar to him, but it doesn't make for a very uh, dynamic figure to look at. He's he's kind of plain. Um, then there's this guy. Now, this guy's pretty cool. I have three of him. So it's an interesting look with the tan and then the gold and the maroon, the gray. I find the gold kind of clashes there, like maybe black would have been better, but at least it makes him kind of unique and kind of stand out. I guess you could consider this maybe a desert version of the Neo Viper. Um, he's, his colors seem to match up with some of those other like desert-like troopers that I had on display. Like there was a Cobra Claws in this color, maybe some of the uh, Sand Vipers and stuff. But anyway, that's a pretty cool design. Um, then here I've got this is the Neo Viper Commander. So he's the same, whoops, the same sculpt from the neck down, and then he's got a different head. So you can see it doesn't have those same fins on the side that that guy does. It's got a different kind of breather on the front. So it's a different look. And of the two commanders that I have, so this one came out earlier and you see he's got a T-crotch on him. This guy came out later and he doesn't have the T-crotch. But they also changed the design of the face. So one guy's got the black breather, the other guy's got the red. But otherwise I think these guys are pretty similar. The grays are a different shade. This guy's a little bit darker. 
So yeah, those are the two Neo Viper commanders that I have. And then I think the last guy we need to look at is the yellow one there. And he actually came with a vehicle. He came with a little little air vehicle called the, uh, what was it, the Hornet? I can't remember the full name now. Um, but yeah, this is a guy that if I wanted to army build him, I would have had to buy a whole bunch of those little Hornets. But I was able to find a lot of them on eBay. And that's how I was able to get a little squad of them. I did buy one Battle Hornet to get this guy. But then I bought the other, I think, five or six that I have as a lot. And even though it's pretty garish and a little hard on the eyes, it is my second favorite version of the Neo Viper after the blue one. There's just something really cool about this look. Um, looks like maybe he would be a specialist, not so much with a pilot, but maybe like a biohazard Neo Viper, something like that. Something that would go into extreme environments, deal with toxic... Uh, chemicals something of that nature so one last thing I want to say on the Neo Viper before I go is that I was really disappointed that we never got a update during the uh, modern toy line so I did make an attempt at doing some customs using Marauder Task Force figures if you're not familiar with Marauder Task Force they make three and three quarter inch or four inch I guess like G.I. Joe sized figures they're compatible with G.I. Joe it's pretty much the same construction but you can go on their website and you can buy them piece by piece. So you can buy like the head and the arms and the, the weapons and the vests and all that kind of stuff. So I went on there and this was my attempt at making a modern Neo Viper. So you can see the head I used here is just got this, this kind of breather on there. And then I bought the helmet separately to put on there. I bought the separate vest and obviously I didn't have anything for a Cobra logo. So I just slapped some red pouches on there. There was no yellow pouches available at the time. So that's what I went with. So it's it's okay as a modern Neo Viper. And I even tried to do the, uh, the yellow version. So here is my attempt at a Neo Viper in yellow. I think that actually looks pretty good. And I liked these designs so much, I actually went ahead and made myself my own custom Neo Viper in orange. So I guess, you know, this would kind of my idea with this guy being like a hazard Neo Viper. This guy, I guess, is kind of along the same lines. Maybe he's a traffic patrol Neo Viper or something. Anyway, so there you go. At number one, the Neo Viper. Okay, so that was my rundown of the top 20 Cobra Troopers of the New Sculpt era. So I hope you found that interesting. Um, if you did, please uh, show me via likes and comments and stuff. And then that way, maybe I'll do another video on this era of G.I. Joe. I could do the top 20 Joes, the top 20 Cobras that aren't troopers, um, or just some other general videos because there was a lot of cool stuff during those years. So yeah, please let me know below. Comment, like, subscribe, all that stuff. So uh, as always, thank you very much for watching. And I'll be back soon with another episode because I got a whole bunch of toys here. My floor is a mess right now with... Masters of the Universe figures, Transformers, Marvel Legends. I'm always falling behind on this stuff. So, yeah, stay tuned. I should have another video up within the week. So uh, watch for that, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Ciao.